you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God our Father through him. And in Philippians 4, 7, in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessing upon your word. And I pray, Father God, that you will just uh, let it ring within our spirit, that ring of freedom. And I thank you, Lord, for how that you have blessed us in this Christmas season. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'll release the kids to rock and roll out of here. Or just to leave. Most of us, as we have the opportunity in this season, I, I know as I, I hear songs that are sung, one of the songs that you hear is that the Magnificent, which is out of Isaiah in the, in the ninth chapter. And I didn't mark it, but I'll find it. And in it, and as you read through that and you see that, and I, I remember hearing this most of my life, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting God, and the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. I look at that and I look as we had one of the prayer requests this morning about our world and everything that's going on in our world. There is no peace in this world whatsoever. You look at uh, all the eyes that are on Alabama this week at this uh, voting. You see what all the things that are going on in our nation. We've never seen. It seems like the turmoil. Those of you that lived through the 60s, for us that were born in 60, uh, we didn't see it as much. For those who lived through the 60s, it was it's similar to that kind of turmoil. There was a lot of things that were ripping apart at the seams, and we were finding yourselves and uh, all the assassinations that happened in the 60s. So there's some cycles that happen in any nation but one of the things I've noticed is that everybody's looking for some kind of something in this life and somewhere but there's always that interruption and I'll use the word peace we can do the miscongeniality one I remember that one was so funny because she's like world peace you know you had to want world peace and the beauty thing but you also find most of us want some kind of peace in our life and where you find that peace is for different people. Now, let me tell you what peace is not necessarily. Peace isn't just a place. I know the beach is a peaceful place for most. Unless you don't know how to swim, then that's not too peaceful. Uh, Jessie doesn't find the beach that peaceful because swimming is not her main thing. But you'll find that uh, there are things that most of us in our life, we can look in the mountains. Some people find that great peace. And that place can produce peace, but the problem with the beach or the mountains, unless you live on the beach, and here's what I have found, those people who live next to the beach, which most of us that live here, if the beach is your peace and tranquility, you have to leave it. Those who live at the beach don't go to the beach that much. That's what I have found. But we who go and vacation at the beach and think, if I could just sit here the rest of my life, then, boy, it would be great. Uh, we look like Tom Hanks on that island, you know, and we find that volleyball to talk to and, and, and Wilson. And you find that most of us look for that peace. But where peace is not, because in this season we, we're talking about peace, where peace is not found is necessarily in our happenings. Now, I love peaceful happenings. I love those things. Here's one thing I would encourage you to do. If you get a chance, because most of the time we don't have lights on in here and we can turn those things off, and you just sit here with that Christmas tree. I'm telling you, folks, there's a peaceful, if you need a moment or two of peace and tranquility, you just come sit in this sanctuary. We promise not to bother you. You come, you pray, and you can sit there and look. And that, when we have the Christmas, most of the time when we come in on the mornings, we turn this, this tree on so you can see it from the office and stuff. There's something peaceful about this season. And with all the Christmas or ornaments on there, definitions behind all of those, but you'll find that there is a great peace in that. But the problem with that, it's not just in the happenings or the place because you always have to get up and leave. Now, I do know that what peace is not is necessarily in the happenings because there's a lot of happenings that we think, well, this would bring great peace if I could just be at the beach or the mountains or by some brook somewhere. But eventually you have to leave that. Peace is not found. If, and then a lot of people say, I would just have great peace if I could have all the wealth that I need. And so I wouldn't have any burdens for any kind of finances in our life. I'll tell you something, folks. As they've done those researches on those people that have won the lotto, and they've got it all, man. They have just, it has been piled on them to excess. It was not peaceful for them. Most everybody would agree. said it was one of the worst things that happened. And they said, we bought a bunch of things, had, became friends with a lot of new people. But the peace wasn't necessarily there. So that's one thing it's not. You'll find that peace is not absence of conflict. Ooh, that's a hard one. 
Because a lot of times you think, if I could just be peaceful, if there would be no conflict whatsoever in my life. I will tell you this. You know, the most peaceful person I have seen is a dead person in a coffin. They have no more conflicts. You want no conflicts? Mm -hmm. Get that one. So it's not necessarily a non-conflicted life. And then peace is also, it's not going to be in that, if I could just have that great popularity and just get there and, and everybody, you see all the uh, Garth Brooks, they're the ones that's got, man, they ain't got no peace. They got guards all around them. They've got things that they can and cannot do. You remember Elvis, mostly all that grew up with Elvis and Blue Christmas. That guy looked for peace all the time. You know the greatest place he found the peace is when he had like the Statesman Quartet. They were the backup at times. He would sit around when he got through, even sometimes when he was high, he would sit around at the piano and they would sing gospel songs. That was his, everybody that gave account of Elvis said that was one of the best times that Elvis ever had. He would go back to his roots of that gospel message and he would sit around and play the piano and they would sing the gospel songs. They said, we've never seen him so peaceful. He couldn't find it in the drugs, couldn't find it in the popularity. But also some people said, if everybody would just leave me alone and I could go and be in anonymity, just nobody know me, I would have great peace. That's not peace either. Let me give you this one, what's not peace. If I could just live in my memories. There's some good ones and there's some bad ones. I don't know about you, you ever get quiet and you think, boy, there's some good memories. And all of a sudden that memory grinch comes in. It reminds you of the ones that weren't so good. And there's nothing worse than the memory grinch coming in. By the time you're thinking, oh, that was good, those days, uh, Gene was reminding me of the story I used with me and my guns as uh, the cowboy. And, and uh, I got that picture sitting on my desk, and I'll pick that up sometimes, and I'll pick the picture up of my, me and my, th my sisters that were young age, and I'm thinking that was some good times. But then all of a sudden the memory grinch comes in and starts telling me of all the times. I wish that we could go back and live in time, in a different time, different place. It was a different time, a different place. When I was growing up, it's not the same. We can't go back in time. I wish we could. And maybe some of you can find, and I can tell you, I don't know who would, but some find peace in a mall at this time of year. You people are weird. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and tell you, there is nothing peaceful about shopping, Period. Now, what you do, if you could sit there knowing that all your shopping's done and you can sit there and watch everybody else hurry and scurry and try to get everything done, that's, that can be peace. You can sit there and just kind of laugh inside going, hey, I, I ain't like you. You know what I mean? So that is not necessarily what peace is. And so when he tells us, he says, he's going to be the prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Let me tell you what peace is. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit of God. Peace is a byproduct of God living in his presence in our life. Now, it's a place of tranquility. It's an absence of conflicts, what Webster says. Mm, gosh, we could never obtain that, could we? I don't know about you, but any given week or any given time, you're going to find there's conflict. You can have conflict with total strangers. You didn't even know that. I mean, you could be, I remember standing in Popeye's one night and I started a riot just by asking if this little girl's hair was real. And I mean, it was unreal. I thought police was going to be called. And I'm just looking at Mindy. I was like, is that because she had weaves and she's like two years old and she had dreads and weaves down here. I was like, are those real? And that mama about come apart on me. And then there was somebody in the back came out of the back there. I mean, we had a, I'm just sitting there trying to get some chicken. And I started to riot it almost. And the police had to come. And, I mean, they were getting at them. I'm just going, I just ask a simple question. You know what I mean? And you can find that everybody is on edge. They're not finding any kind of peace. But one of the things that we are in great need of is that peace in this day and time. Now, I can tell you what it's not. To find out what it is, the Bible tells us, Blessed are the peacemakers. Peace is something that I would say you're going to have to fight for. Most of us don't like fight. Most of us would avoid conflict if we could. There are some people who just live to fight. <sighs> Most of us would like everybody to kind of leave us alone. And, and sometimes we'd like to spend that island with Wilson on that island for about a month. But after a month, we'd be fighting with ourselves. You had to have somebody to fight because the turmoil is from within. We can look at all without. I can look at the short fat guy over in Korea and say, if he just wasn't here, we could have peace. And if you wasn't trying to lob a nuclear bomb at us or in Tehran or there's somebody going to take their place. Even though Hitler was killed off back in 42, that spirit of Hitler is still here today. It's called an antichrist, anti-peace. 
You find yourself, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed, and let me just, let me change this a little bit. Let me Donnyize this a little bit. Blessed are those who fight for peace. Mm, that's hard. It didn't say blessed are the peacekeepers. Peacekeepers are the avoidance of conflict. Peacekeepers are those, and I'll, I'll tell you, I, even though the UN's try to do great work and those blue helmets they wear and stuff, but I'll tell you, I take the American Army over the UN Army because they can't figure out who they're fighting for and what they're fighting for. I'll tell you something. If you know what you're fighting for, and this is why he says his kingdom will increase in peace. But it's got to be for us, those of us who understand that peace is not just kind of a mystical substance that you can walk into or that you can necessarily find and keep on a beach. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with sitting on a beach. Nothing wrong sitting by that babbling book in the mountains if that's your peace. Nothing wrong with if you saw the snow. Man, there was nothing better than open up the shades and just kind of looking out there and you're warm to your house. And just kind of looking at those pine trees drooping, you know, that Alabama song is snowing in the pines. It means a little bit different this year for us. And you find yourself that you look at that and you go, boy, that is peaceful. It's quiet. Cars aren't running up down the street. And you're just, just like, hmm, that's good stuff. But then the snow melts and the cars start coming back. And then you find that everything changes. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who understand it's going to be a fight to find peace. It's not just going to come because you go, everybody just kind of leave me alone. You know, I can avoid conflict. I can, it's always going to be, folks, in the turmoil that happens during this Christmas season. I mean, let me add another part of this Donny I version of blessed are, the, are the, the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are willing to surrender their right to the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who join with the Prince of Peace and his government. Now, let me give you this. This is probably my, my definition of this. What peace is, and you can take it or leave it, is an assurance that there is a God greater than any conflict that you'll ever face in your life that is bigger than I am and anything that I go through and will conquer anything that affects my life and has any effect in my life and it will conquer all those things in the end. Will he conquer it today? I don't know. Some of you are sitting here with some turmoil that's going on in your life where you walked in these doors. Some of you came in these doors today with all kind of turmoil. Maybe it's not the Christmas turmoil. Maybe it's just your life turmoil. Some of you have got kids that maybe have walked away from the Lord, grandkids that maybe are not with the Lord. Maybe you've got some things that are going on in your family. But I will tell you, according to Scriptures, he is the Prince of Peace. And it says, according to Thessalonians 3.16, it says, the Lord of Peace himself will give you peace. Is he going to take away every conflict, everything that's going on? The Bible says also in Proverbs 14, 30, it says a heart at peace gives life to the whole body. So there's something that happens, and peace is not found from without. I wish it was, don't you? Don't you wish that you have one of those? I mean, there's nothing worse. We've got a home phone, and if you're unlisted, I won't answer your phone because of people that call wanting something want me to do something we don't hardly answer we look at toll free gone they interrupt our peace all the time don't they about the time you sit down at dinner or you sit down and try to watch a good movie or something the phone rings and you have to get up used to on the before we had the other tv before we got direct tv we used to have id on the tv you didn't have to move you had to call her id but you find yourself that everybody wants to interrupt whatever it is you're but they don't know you got the peace they don't know you're sitting there wanting peace they just calling you and you find that God is giving us that assurance. And that's what I see peace is, is that God is giving us an assurance that he is bigger than anything I'm going to face and will conquer everything in the end. Folks, that's the only promise we have. You're not promised because Jesus even said, and he told his disciples this, and I, and I go there a lot because I do a lot of funerals. I wish that we would have understanding that John 16 he says I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in other words I am revealing to you and Jesus went on this is a revelation he gave folks according to you'll see in scripture in Matthew 10 34 he says don't mistake something here don't mistake that I've come to this world to bring peace he said no I'm coming to bring a sword there's, there's going to be even more turmoil don't believe me you start speaking the name of Jesus and see how people get happy 
You start, I mean, how many people have you known in the workplace that they just want to talk about Jesus and all of a sudden, boom, you got to get out of here. And you know what the greatest piece of that workplace is for everybody to be invited to Jesus. But the world says, no, leave him out. There's turmoil. He told us that. He says, look, I'm not coming so that everybody has this warm, ooey-gooey feeling of peace. He says, I am coming, and the truth that I am going to bear is going to bring great turmoil. Woo, isn't that fun? Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who fight for peace. Blessed are those who understand that God is going to conquer everything that we face in this life in the ultimate end. And we are supposed to fight each day as if we're living for His kingdom, which is His kingdom is ever increasing, and that is peace. Where does peace start? Where does it begin? I look at it and I see that Jesus said, I'm not coming to bring peace, but He says, I am coming and I am the Prince of Peace. So where do you start with that? I don't know how many times you've prayed, but I know I have prayed at times, and you're thinking, well, if I could just get through this week a little more peaceful. Last week was just living, walking through the coals of Hades. If I could just get through this week, God, that'd be an awesome week. You may or not get that. You may or not get the peace that you think you need. But what I can tell you is that the Prince of Peace will go with you. The first step to peace that you're going to have and the first step that you've got to have peace is that you've got to have the gift of peace. That starts with the surrender of our hearts and souls. You know, where I find most of the times in my life is that when the lordship of Jesus Christ is being questioned by me is where the turmoil usually is evident. In other words, when I start wrestling back from him, the lordship of my life, because I have done that many times, folks. Maybe y'all haven't. You got your angel's wings, which is a theological mistake anyway in that. But you find yourself that you're wrestling back the reins of your life back in. And you try to fix things that you have no control over. Instead of going to that place of prayer in the Prince of Peace, kneel down. That's why we're having these times of prayer where we kneel down and we pray for the lost. And you have that time where you're giving back the lordship of your life to Jesus Christ. There's multiple times that any one of us need to do that. Many times that we'll sit there and we'll go, why is my life in such turmoil? And if you would just look in your hands and the reins of your life that is in your hands and you're wanting to direct it because you don't trust God. And it's like, how can you be a Christian and not trust God? Folks, I've done it. I don't want to trust him with the outcome of things. I don't want to trust him with the beginning. I don't want to trust him with the end because I think I can control it a little better. And God's telling us, he's saying, look, you've got to put the reins of your life back in my hands, the lordship of Jesus Christ. You know where that will start looking right is we'll start going, you know, that thing that bothered me last week is not bothering me this week. I don't know if you've ever done that, but you ever gotten to that place where you're at that impossible impasse in your life and finally you come to the altar and you kneel down and you pray and say God I am tired I am frustrated and I am surrendering this to you I have no more solutions I have said next and now an empty solution has come up I got nothing I got nothing God and he says good good when we finally come to the end of ourselves it's when we can truly be granted that gift of peace Here's my choice I have to make. Am I receiving that gift or pushing that gift away? Because the gift of peace comes with a great amount of truth. Like Jesus was telling, he says, I am not coming that you'll have this tranquil life sitting on a beach without conflict. He told his disciples this. He gave them a list of things that were about to happen. He says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In me you will have peace. Because in this world you will have trouble. I love that. Because that is so true. In me you'll have peace. In the world you'll have trouble. His kingdom comes with peace that's ever increasing. It says, take heart, I have overcome this world. So in me you have peace, in the world you have trouble. Understand that. That's a principle. That's a thing that good Jesus is telling us there. It also says that we can have full life to our body if we understand that gift of peace that he's given us. In Romans 5.1, it tells us that we have peace with God through the forgiveness of, the, of our sins through in Jesus Christ. And that peace that we have is found first in that place of making Jesus Christ, receiving him as that gift. I love looking in the baby in the manger. There's nothing more peaceful than when a baby is sleeping. Nothing unpeaceful than when they're crying and they're hungry. But there's nothing more. We, all, we don't see that. Well, we see the babe in the manger and that peaceful setting there like the winter snow. We see that. 
But I'm going to tell you something. When he spoke to the Pharisees, they did not like him. He was upsetting their kingdom. When he spoke and, and the demons would come running up to him and say, Master, what would you have to do with us? Oh, he didn't come to bring peace to that. He came to bring peace to that person and cast them demons out. His kingdom is always in conflict with this kingdom in which we live. He said, this is the world in which you live. You're living in a world that's going to be a lot of trouble. But he said, if you'll get this gift of peace that I'm giving you, and the only way we receive that is through that surrender of our lives to Jesus Christ, every aspect of it. And there are going to be some times that we'll look at it and go, ah, I thought I had it, but I don't have it. When you're standing there in the mall and that one person can kind of tweak you. I don't know if you remember Three Stooges, but that one that always got tweaked about everything. They're always tweaking each other. But you always, you'll find that stooge somewhere in the mall and they just turn around and tweak you. Maybe that's that time where you don't understand. Maybe it's somebody you work with and they just tweak you. And you find yourself in every one of our lives, you'll find that each one of you are going to struggle to find this peace. But the Lordship of Jesus Christ is where we find that gifting. Understand, it is the expectations versus reality. Now, when we receive Jesus Christ, I wish that when you were centered in your life, that everything was hunky-dory. Everything rose smoothly. All your bills are paid now. Now, there's evangelists on TV you can watch. They'll tell you that. All you got to do is give them a $1,000 gift. All your bills will be paid. Right. All they got to do is have another plane to fly around in. You'll be blessed. Right. Just give to them. You'll find that all of our expectations are that I gave my life to Jesus and I should never have another problem. Blessed are the peacemakers, those who fight for peace living in this world that is against Christ, an anti-Christ world. We're living in a place, tell the folks that are living in Saudi Arabia that are proclaiming the gospel today that they're supposed to have peace. You know where they find their peace? is in the Prince of Peace. There's always somebody that's trying to take their life. You find those Christians that are living in Tehran today and you ask them, where is your peace? It is not found on the exterior. It is found on the interior because of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And every day that they get up with their lives being threatened, they have to look at it and say, you know what? No matter what the outcome of this day is, I still have the peace of Christ. We might not quite understand that because we live in such an affluent society and one that is semi-Christian. And we find ourselves, according to Ephesians 2, 14, it says he is our peace. He has broken down those hostility of barriers. And since he has done that, then we have this expectation that we can go to God with every one of our concerns, our prayers, everything that's going on. Does that going to change everything? I don't necessarily think it will change everything. Am I telling you you're going to have a hard time at some times in your life? Yes, you are. Does that affect your peace? No, it shouldn't. Because peace is a byproduct of the relationship, which is a fruit of the Spirit according to Galatians, the fifth chapter. That peace that when you don't have peace, then the first place I start looking is my relationship, not necessarily in the exterior what's going on. If you go to the Lord in prayer and say, God, if you would just kill so-and-so and get them out of my life, nobody would ever say that, would we? If you would just take care of this problem and get them out of my life, then my life would be peaceful. If you would just give me the lottery, God, I would bless everybody around me. I'd make sure everybody had a new Ferrari. Yeah, right. You find that greed in your heart popped up and took every bit of that money, and you're going, you can't have any. I can't live off this $100 million. I couldn't live off $100 last week. Now I can't live off $100 million. You find yourself where surrender is found is in that place, that babe in the manger, when we look at the peace in that. And you know what he represented? An invading kingdom to this kingdom. That's why they tried to kill him. That's why Herod didn't want him. Because he understood there was a kingdom that was coming. Not just a babe. But a kingdom that was going to produce peace. And that peace was going to be through the fight. And you don't understand this. When you see Paul. Because you see in Romans 7th chapter. He describes this fight. It's things I don't want to do. I end up doing the things I do want to do. I don't do. And he's like this is a fight that's going on the inside of me. But he said thanks be to God. Who's given us the victory on the Lord Jesus Christ. He understood where the peace came from. The peace wasn't necessarily an absence of conflict, but peace was necessarily living in that place. So surrender to Jesus Christ. 
Now, as I read to you in Colossians, the third chapter, I'm going to bring a few points out of this because I do believe that as we look at scriptures, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Now, I've used this before, and I said, let the peace, let the peace of Christ umpire your hearts. Let them call the shots. When you have surrender to God, let the peace of Christ call the shots in your life. When you can't hear him, then you need to go back to your knees. When you find that conflict is screaming louder than the voice of God, go back to your knees. First place, and if I want to tell you, if you get peace, let the peace of Christ rule. When it is not ruling in your lives, when conflict is ruling in your lives, that's where we need to bow our knees. That's a good indicator that the Lordship of Jesus Christ needs to be renewed. His kingdom needs to be revived in our lives. When we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, he said everything is going to be added to us. And one of those things added to us is peace. Peace comes through that right relationship with God. Then he can produce in us a thankfulness in our hearts. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. When that is ruling, folks, and what other one of those indicators, since members of one body, you're called to peace. And then one of the indicators, when peace is ruling our lives, it says, and be thankful. Boy, when you're thankful, there's a greater peace that happens. That's that goofy grin society that God joins, that we join when we come to Christ. That means that when all of Hades is breaking out around you, you got the goofy grin. It's going to be okay. And then you have those that are the warriors. You have those that are the Grinches of peace that want to take it back from you and say, but don't you understand what's going on? Let me lay it out for you. You're going bankrupt. Your dog hates you and your cat likes you. Figure that one out. For those of you who have cats, you might like them. That's good. I've got a cat. She likes me. I don't know why, but she does. But you find yourself, and, and when the peace is there, thanksgiving is an indicator, an exterior indicator to your heart that the kingdom of God is ruling. And when you're not thankful, folks, I will tell you this, the peace will not be there. That is just one of those good indicators there. And then it goes on to tell us, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish each other with all wisdom. I love that part because that is the only place that you're going to actually reinforce the peace that's in your heart. Peace comes from trusting God who is greater than your situation. If you're looking at your situation and it just seems impossible, you need to get back to the promises of the Word of God. Let the peace of Christ umpire in your heart. When it's umpiring and saying, boy, there's something amiss here, the thankfulness ought to be rolling. And if the thankfulness is not rolling, you need to go back and look at the Word and let it dwell richly in you. If the Word is not dwelling richly, I will tell you this. Everything that comes into your life will try to beat up the peace of God that's there. If the Word of God is dwelling richly, you'll understand that His character and His peace are tied to this Word. That you can trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And that last part is, says, then the deeds are going to follow that. Why is that important, folks? This peace and this kingdom God has given you is not for you just to preserve, but it's for you to invest in others. What is a deed of peace? That means that when that person has turmoil breaking in in their lives, you can give them the word. Let me tell you something. My God is greater than what you're facing right now. That's your deed and word or deed. Or you can be there when they can't figure out how to keep their power on and you got this extra $100. You don't know where that came from. All of a sudden you go, here, put that on your power bill. That's a deed that brings some thanksgiving. That's a deed that brings some peace. Why are those things important? Because God has commanded us to live under his lordship and his authority. He is that prince of peace. His government is ever increasing. How is that increasing? Because his kingdom is increasing in us. His kingdom is not a kingdom of horses and chariots. His kingdom is a kingdom of lordship starting here. And it works its way out. When peace is there, folks, thanksgiving will flow. When thanksgiving is flowing in our lives, we will turn. And there is a place in the word that we'll find that his character and his word are here. He will not ever disavow this word. I've got to put my trust there. And when I'm putting my trust there, folks, I'm going to tell you something. There's not a greater peace in all the world than when you're doing 
and you're working in the kingdom of God. This world is lost and it's dying. It's a kingdom that is opposite of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason he came as a babe in the manger, the prince of peace, was so that he would bring conflict into this world that was full of conflict. But his conflict is one that brings peace. Is it a war? Yes, it is a war. Is it something that we just say, just get it by osmosis and we can just sit around and just lay on the fluffy clouds the rest of our life? Folks, I'm going to tell you something. That's heaven somewhere. I guess laying on a fluffy cloud, but I really don't want to. But I look at it and I see heaven as a whole different thing. The lordship of God. He is the light of the place. But right now, we're in a kingdom that's in conflict. This world and all the things that we see going on, even this week, what we watch in the political arena, what we see in the, and everything that's going on in this world, it just seems to be ratcheting up. But we have the Prince of Peace to speak His Word, to tell who God is, that He is in control even of every bad situation that happens in our life. There have been some bad things happen to good people. And standing before a, a people like yourself, you've had some interesting things that have happened in each one of your lives. But God still is your peace in the midst of turmoil. In this world, you will have trouble. But He is the peace in the midst of that trouble. The Lordship of Jesus Christ is the key. Surrender in our lives is the key. Let us peace call the shots in our life. You know, sometimes the Lord will say, yeah, that's a bad situation. But I got you. I got you back. I got you front. I got you all around. I got my angels that are surrounding you. I got it. But God, and I'm like the disciples. I want to wake him up. He seems to be asleep. But God, you don't understand. He's like, I got it. I got it. It's under control. Things that you think are important aren't that important. Let his peace rule in this season. We light the peace candle. He did not come to remove all strife. In fact, he created strife in my life when I first got introduced to him. I argued with whether I needed him or not. What do I need him? Don't we all? Let's pray together. Father, we are just blessed today knowing that you are our Lord. And Lord, as we surrender our lives to you, may the Lordship of Jesus Christ be evident during this season. There's a lot of things that probably we would change about this world, a lot of things that we try to make heaven here on this earth, and it's never going to be. It will never be, Lord. You said you're going to make this earth a new earth, new heaven. This old order and the old way of things are going to dissolve and pass away. Death, dying, disease, conflict, all these things are going to pass away. But in the meantime in which we live, there is a lot of trouble in this world. But Lord, we have your peace. Thank you for that gift that we found in the manger. But it is a gift that does bring conflict into our lives. But that conflict is for the surrender of our lives to Jesus Christ. So, Lord, anybody here today that has an overwhelming sense in their life of just the, the conflicts of this world, the things that are going on around them, I ask you for your gift of peace for them today as they surrender their lives to you. Thank you for that, Father. Your blessings upon this congregation as we proclaim Christ till he comes. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Let's stand. We're going to close by singing this song, Your Love Amazes Me. If you have a prayer need today, if conflict is overwhelming you, let's pray and just ask the Lord to bless with His gift of peace. You dance over me while I You sing all around, but I never hear the sound. Lord, I'm amazed by you. 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 And I 
God, you do amaze us in your love for us. And I thank you, Lord God, that you, you in this season are our peace. And Lord, great is the conflict in this world. And even sometimes great is the conflict in our life. But Lord, you remain our peace. And Lord, you said you would grant that perfect peace for those who keep their hearts steadfast upon you. And I just thank you for that peace. Keep our hearts upon you. Let us hear your voice. Act according to your word. And Lord, let thanksgiving and gratefulness just flow out of ourselves. In every word and every deed. And Lord, let peace be evident in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Now go in his peace. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, we got a